What we do this time? Hi everyone, my name is John Mendoza and we are talking about diabetes today. So this is a health guide by the NAACP and let's get into it. So what is diabetes, right? So what is diabetes? Diabetes really just means that you have a lot of sugar in your blood. Um, and when you have a lot of sugar in your blood, that does many things to you. One of them, slowing your blood down. If your blood slows down, then you slow down. That's when you get very tired. Uh, besides that, it can lead to heart complications, serious infections, something called septic shock, and amputations, and ultimately death. So that's what diabetes can do to you. So diabetes is like a gateway drug. Um, from there, you can go into many different other types of illnesses that you do not want to deal with, okay? So it's best if we stop the diabetes before it turns into something else that we don't want it to be, okay? And I talked about everything here. So um, if you're watching the video and you just want to you know, take notes down, go ahead and pause it and then just keep going. But in general, there are, depending on which book you read, there's gonna be maybe four, three, or two types of diabetes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about just two because I want to prevent and reverse the issue, okay? So type one and type two diabetes. Those are the most common diabetes that you will come across. Let's talk about type one first. Type one is actually the worst of the two. Type one, you are normally born with through genetics. So things are passed down, inherited through the blood and the genes, right? So if you're born with diabetes, most likely you have type one diabetes. And all that means is that your parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and their parents, or somewhere along that line, somebody had diabetes severely. And when they conceived your parent or grandparent, they were actively diabetic and they passed down that gene when they were diabetic during um, when they were conceiving you. And that's how that works pretty much, okay? So, however, type two diabetes, and let me stick on to type one diabetes just for a little bit longer. So with type one diabetes, that means that know that you have a lot of sugar in your blood. And the reason you have a lot of sugar in your blood is because you ate too many carbs for too long or your parents passed down that gene and they ate too much unhealthy stuff for way too long, okay? Uh, type two diabetes, you have to earn. So a type two diabetic usually was born normal, but because of bad habits, bad dietary, they over consume carbs and over consume sugars and in the blood, and so now you have too much sugar in your bloodstream, okay? And that is what type two diabetes is. You pretty much earned it over time and you ruined your pancreas. Your pancreas is an organ that controls the sugar levels in your blood. When you eat too many breads, tortillas, chips, any one of those carbs, even too much, too much um, rice and potatoes, if you have too much of those, that are natural that are natural carbs, you're gonna spike your glucose levels up. Glucose is sugar. So let me kind of go back a little bit and say why. So anytime you eat breads, carbs are breads, sugar, rices, that gets turned into sugar in your body. We do not wanna have too much sugar in the bloodstream, okay? We do not want that. So that if you have diabetes, really just means you eat too much and or you eat too many carbs and or sugars, the things that I just listed. So over a long period of time of having a bad diet, eating too much breads, eating too much sugar, carbs in general, you're gonna develop what is diabetes, type two diabetes, okay? And what that means is that the organ, which we call the pancreas, 
is no longer working effectively because you ate so much because the pancreas controls the sugar levels in the system but you ate so much for so long that you busted it, you broke your pancreas. And now the insulin that it's making is not effective because it's rushing to make the insulin, so it's not gonna be as good. Or it just stops working in general because you just broke it, you're doing too much. So I'm not, even, I'm, not even, I'm not even helping, so I'm not gonna help. And that's pretty much what your pancreas does to you, okay? So that's type two diabetes. Again, type two, you have to grow into it. You have to develop it over time. You have to earn it. Um, type 1 diabetes is the diabetes that you're either born with or if you continue to have your bad diet, you can go from type 2 diabetes, which is not that bad, into type 1 diabetes. So a type 2 diabetes, your pancreas is still somewhat working, but it's not very effective. When we're into type 1 diabetes, your pancreas is shot. Like it's just not going to work with you. So then you have to start taking what is called insulin. So if you're diabetic right now, or you know someone that's diabetic, you heard of insulin. Well, the pancreas is what makes the insulin in your body. You make your own medicine. So the pancreas makes the insulin that then gets the, the sugar from the blood into the cells. So then the blood is like water, runs like water. It's not thick anymore, okay? But we don't want thick blood, we want water blood. Okay, we want it to run like water. So, besides everything that I just mentioned, uh, a reason that diabetes is bad is because if you are a diabetic, you are prone to having more infections and more serious infections at that because bacteria love sugar. So if you're packing your body with sugar and all these carbs that get, then get turned into sugar, bacteria is gonna attack more aggressively. So if, you, if I get a cut and I'm diabetic, if I get a cut on my hand and, I get, and I'm diabetic, that cut is prone to get infected much faster and much more aggressively as opposed to if I was not diabetic. And again, bacteria, it's a living thing. They're like little animals that just eat, 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 eat. And so what you see here is the bacteria eat, literally eating your flesh because of all that sugar in the flesh. That's what happens. Well, if that continues, and here's your verbiage in case you wanna you know, take a screenshot or pause it, it's pretty much everything I just said. If this continues to go because you're, you have so much sugar, it's gonna eventually turn into what we call gangrene. Gangrene is complete tissue. That, that tissue is not coming back no matter what, okay? For the most part, unless they're coming up with some other stuff that I don't know about STEM research. However though, um, so the infection will go from a severe infection into gangrene. And again, bacteria loves sugar. So it's gonna attack so aggressively that it's gonna kill that tissue. On top of that, what is what kills bacteria, what kills viruses? Your white blood cells does, WBCs. They kill the bacteria, right? But if you have sugar in your blood, the white blood cells are in your bloodstream. Sugar slows everything down, right? Going back to what I said originally, sugar is gonna slow everything down. It actually makes your blood flow a lot slower. So one, Bacteria is gonna kill the crap and eat the crap out of your flesh because it loves that sugar, right? So it's gonna be more aggressive, times two, times three, times four. On top of that, that same sugar is making your blood like syrup. If I were to pour some syrup, imagine that syrup going down. Imagine me pouring water, water's faster. Well, because your blood is now like syrup, because you have that sugar in it, the white blood cells, your soldiers that would come here to the battle site and attack that bacteria that's eating your flesh is not getting there fast enough. So one, bacteria loves sugar, so it's gonna stack it a lot more aggressively. Two, your blood is thick and it's slowing down the white blood cells that would kill that bacteria also because of that sugar. It's like a double-edged sword. It's killing you in two ways. It's slowing you down and it's eating you faster, okay? So again, hopefully that painted the picture of how diabetes is more than just a disease by itself. It's what happens after the fact. 
or what else diabetes opens the door up for. It's like a gateway drug, like a gateway illness that leads, that opens the door into more illnesses, okay? And that's where we are with that. So bacteria, because it loves sugar, they're gonna stack on a lot more. White blood cells can't get there fast enough to kill the bacteria. We lead into gangrene, which ultimately leads into amputations. Now, if you know someone that has an amputation, chances are most likely they're diabetic or they've been in a car accident, all right? And the thing about the amputations is that you're amputating, you're chopping off limbs, but this person obviously has not educated because if they were educated in the illness, really educated, truly educated, they would have never gotten this far, okay? Now, this person is only gonna get worse because of the education factor. Because we just turned a little wound into a much bigger wound. And this person most likely does not have good habits. So it's just gonna keep going and going and going until they're dead. And that's diabetes, okay? And that's why diabetes is so bad. All right, so that's the main thing as far as diabetes, what the public should know uh, and why it's bad, what it does to you, it makes you tired, right? Causes severe infections, leading to gangrene and amputations. And then if the bad habits still consist, death ultimately. So I'm gonna talk about two more little issues um, having to do with diabetes that's tied into diabetes, and then we'll go from there. So the two other things, and I already talked about one of them, was a uh, poor circulation. Again, that blood gets real thick like syrup, right? So it travels real slow. So because of that, your circulation is slow, you're slow. And that's why diabetics are so tired and lethargic because of that poor circulation because of that thick blood. The other thing is cardiovascular disease. So now we're going into like heart attacks, right? And the reason is because every time you have too much sugar in the system, your body will automatically store that as fat. So all the fat you have in your body comes from the breads, tortillas, chips, sugar, sodas that you actually consume, okay? So that fat doesn't just get stored around your belly, around your organs, it actually gets stored inside your vessels. So cardiovascular, cardio means heart, vascular means vessels. So this is a heart, these are the vessels that go over the heart, so these are gonna be clogged up, okay? So that's the other two issues, and we're gonna actually branch off and make more lectures off of these. But real quick, cardiovascular disease is pretty much everything I just talked about because of that fat. So now, we have poor circulation, right? We have poor circulation because the blood is thick and slow. On top of that, the extra sugar that's not in the blood got stored inside the vessels. So now, imagine a water hose is a vessel. You got a layer of fat around on the inside of that vessel because that stores sugar. And the sugar that's in the blood at the moment is slowing it down. So you're making really bad circulation and you have chunks of fat all around the wall as this thick, viscous blood is passing through the vessels that supply your heart with blood and oxygen. And that's why that's a big issue. And now we're getting into heart, uh, heart attacks, uh, heart failure, and there's whole other sections for that. Uh, this is just a series of, of uh, courses that we're gonna start. Poor circulation, I talked about that, but go ahead and get your verbiage if you, if you want to. Um, that's that glucose, right? That sugar that's slowing everything down because it's making your blood like syrup. All right, so uh, what is diabetes? We talked about it. What causes diabetes? Breads, chips, cookies, soups. Soups are like ramen noodle soups, right? Like the carb stuff, not like the not, not the soup with the meat and the, no, it's like ramen noodles type of soup. And it's pretty much everything I talked about. If you wanna go ahead and pause it, please do take your note. But here's a tip. So processed food foods are also very unhealthy and add to the negative consequences of high carbs and uh, high sugar diet, okay? So we don't wanna add ingredients. So besides carbs, carbs that are processed are even worse. So your chips, right? Some tortillas, not natural tortillas, but some tortillas that are mass produced with preservatives. That's where you start going into murky waters now. So if you are going to consume carbs, and carbs aren't bad, as long as they're natural carbs, like your rice, your potatoes, things like that, pasta that's naturally made, things of that nature. So 
Carbs aren't bad, it's just you want to keep it as natural as possible because if you put stuff like preservatives in your body, that's not good. And it's only adding to your bad habits, okay? You're compounding the negativity. All right, so ultimately, like I said, insulin is what makes all that sugar in the bloodstream kind of go away from the bloodstream to keep the blood running like a river, like water, right? Just like that. Um, but if you overconsume too many carbs, and especially the processed carbs, you're shutting down your pancreas, which is the insulin producer, it's the insulin maker of the system. And that being said, good luck. On behalf of me and the NAACP, good luck. Share this information with your friends, your family, um, and the members.